Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm late. I'm a minute late. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got back in the house. I just went out and fed. Can you hear me, honey? Oh, yeah. Let's fix this. Oh, look at who all's on here. Can you guys hear me? I'm waiting for anybody to tell me if you can hear me. Oh, good. Thank you, Susan. You're the only one that answered me so far. I'm going, ah! Okay, guys. Okay. Hey, it's good to be with you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Chuck's in the other room. He just got back today. He spent a couple of days, a few days with his son and uh, his wife and their and his grandchildren and his sister and her family. And it was, it was a wonderful trip. I am so glad to have him home though. And I've had uh, the blessing of having Margaret here with me this these past few days, and she's just truly a blessing. I cherish that girl. Let me go through real quick, quickly, and say hi to everybody, just real, real fast here. Hi, Trumpet. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Rosa. Hi, Carol. Hi, Francisca. Hi, Ray Jane. Hi. There's Vivian. There's one little wrench, one little wrenchy, wrenchy. There is, hi, Tim. There is Susan. Let's see. Who else have we got? Okay. Uh, oh, Gina Vanzani. Hi, Gina. There is, uh, oh, there's another ranch. There's our Paul. And I know somewhere Chuck's on here somewhere. Let me see who else, who else? Hi, Cheyenne. There's Melanie. Guys, it's so good to see you all. There's my, there's my sweet potato pie. All right, guys. <laughs> Golly, I just went out and fed the kitty. And so I got all blown away. Okay. I hope you guys are doing well. We had, um, I had a conversation with uh, Judy the other day. And for those of you who are interested, she is going to start, I can't remember what it's called, Food for Thought, which will be the food portion of our um, of temple keepers. That's what we're calling it. Temple keepers. So Judy's going to do the food part and she's her first uh, meeting is going to be this coming Wednesday, just in a couple of days on the 10th. And I will be putting information out about that. So please be watching. I'll try to remember to put it. Um, I'll try to put it on remember to put a community tab on the channel. Also, She's got a uh, partner in this, and that is Nicole. She's going to be helping Judy, and I have another announcement. We have, I don't know when she's actually going to start, but my sister Linda is going to be doing the faith part of the uh, Temple Keepers, and so she'll be doing Zoom meetings. These are going to be in Zoom meetings, you guys, and we'll record them, and then we will turn around and post them on the channel, okay? Okay. And Linda's going to do the part, the part about faith. And let's see. Of course, we know Margaret's going to do the part, the uh, fitness part. And what else can I tell you? Yes, Melanie, warfare. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad the Lord stopped it. That's awesome. Uh, what else? Okay. For those of you who are not joining on Saturdays, the Saturday morning prayers with Vivian is going really well for those. And if you have prayer requests that you want them to pray over during that time to get on that prayer list, just send them to Vivian at prayerswithvivian at gmail.com. If you have prayer requests this evening, oh good, I do have water. <laughs> if you have prayer requests this evening, please put the word request in all caps and then in chat, and then your request so that people scrolling through looking for people who need prayer or who are asking for prayer will see that. They'll see request and then they'll, you know, it'll kind of jump out of them. Okay, let's see who else is on here. And you all know about the Friday Zooms. Um, I just saw somebody. Hi, Cheryl. You are saying hello. Good girl. And hi, Kathleen. 
It's so good to see you guys. It really is. It just feels like it's been forever since we've since we've had a live stream. I don't know why that is. I, because the week has been very, very full. It's been wonderful. It's been very full. Chuck didn't get home until, I don't know, honey, I think it was close to between 5.30 or 6 this morning. He left Nashville last night and uh, drove through the night. And I'm so glad to have him back. I miss him when he's gone. And of course, Amon misses him when he's gone too. So let me see something real quick because people are texting me. And I just want to make sure. Linda's saying audio. I don't know if that's my sister. I don't know if she's on here and why she's saying audio. But you guys are saying you can hear me. So I'm going to guess this must be something else. Um, I have a message. And honestly, I finished finished writing it at uh, about three minutes till seven tonight. I had gotten just a, a little bit of it yesterday and sat to write this morning and just I couldn't. I was a little bit too tired. So I ended up taking a nap and doing some other things that I had to get done as well. And so I did. <laughs> So, but I have to wait on Father too. He, I know he waits on me, and I have to wait on him because I can ask him throughout the day. And if he's, if I feel him impressing me to, yeah, go sit down, let's do this, then I will. But sometimes I just, sometimes I don't. I'm not aware of that, or sometimes I just ask him, "Can I please? I need to take a nap." <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah." So, and who did I just see? Hi, Esther. It is so good to see you. Okay. Oh my goodness sakes, you guys. This is showing that we have 29 people that are watching and 15 likes. Guys, please do me a favor. I hate ha asking you, but please, please hit the like uh, thumbs up thing so that somebody's actually going to maybe an, an algorithm will say, okay, well, we'll go ahead and put this out there. Yay for naps. Boy, that's the truth. Let's pray. We are going to pray and we are going to, don't forget, we're going to have sacrament tonight as we do every week. And uh, I will share the message with you. And Margaret had already asked me to send it to her. I didn't have it yet. So <laughs> I've got it now and I will be sending it, Margaret. Thank you, sis. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to get myself settled here because I have, I feel like just like the last hour I've sort of been hurrying to get this message uh, written as, as the Lord's given it to me. Didn't want to be late. Okay. You guys ready? Let's pray. Let me, let me see. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Tim, for hitting the like. All right, guys, let's pray. <laughs> Father, thank you so much for this time. Almighty God, how we need you and not just need you, but we want you. Every single second you give us is a beautiful gift. It, it doesn't even, whether it's a, whether it's that we're going through a trial during those seconds or we're, we're in great joy because of some fun or wonderful thing that you've done or some kind of Thing we've seen in our lives or in someone else's lives that we love. They're all blessings. Every second is a gift. Every second is a blessing. Father, please forgive us for the time so we just, we say stupid, stupid things like, well, this was a bad day. <laughs> Every day is a blessing. And we know that times are becoming more diff difficult for many people around the world. But Lord God, you said everything is a gift. Every, every bless, every, everything is a gift. Everything is a blessing because you use it all. So Father, we want to honor you with the things that we say and the things we do. And Father, as I always, always hope that I always remember to do this, I give you the lead of this meeting. I ask you, please, Father, have your way. Whether it's what you say through me or what people are saying in chat or the prayers that are being offered, Lord, we just pray that you would have your way. And we thank you so much that you bless us to be able to come together in this way. It's a huge blessing. 
I'm just amazed, God. Chuck and I both are amazed. People we didn't know just a short time ago, now we've met. And it's even in this way, we've you've connected us with others in the body of Christ. You've blessed us to be able to be part of your work here in the earth. Everyone on here, everyone that uh, has crossed the path of this channel or anything to do with any of the ministry, Father, we are so blessed. Even the ones that don't like us, <laughs> we're blessed still. <laughs> and we thank you for that, God. So, Lord, have your way this night, and I ask you to help me as I read, because I'm not reading typed. Um, I'm not reading type. I'm reading my handwriting. So I thank you and praise you, God, for what you're going to say and do in this hour, in this time, however long it is. I thank you and praise you, God, and pray that you would be glorified. And I agree with, with my husband as he prayed beforehand that whatever you say, whatever it is that happens here, Lord, the enemy would not be able to twist it in any way to bring confusion or to change meanings or anything like that, God. But that these words would truly go down into the hearts of the hearers. And Father, I I uh, ask you to bless them to remember to bring everything they hear to you so that they don't, so that we don't just believe something because somebody said it and it sounded good. Mm -hmm. Bless us to have wisdom to remember that we are stewards over what we choose to believe. We're stewards over what we choose to take in and receive. And our stewardship means we need to come to you and find out what you have to say about every matter. So thank you, Father God. Please forgive us for everyone who's willing to pray this with me. Please forgive us for our sins, Father. And bless us to remember that we are to let go and forgive the sins of others, that we are not to hold any kind of offense against anyone. Help, Lord, help us remember that in moments when we are complaining, we're grumbling about anything, help us remember you hate that. Help us clean up our speech if that's what we're doing. We bless your name this night, Lord, and we thank you and praise you for these things in the name of our Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay. Um, say real quick highs, and then I'm going to get into the message, you, go, you guys. Hi, Marianne. Uh, who did I miss? Hi, Janae. I think that's probably all so far. Okay, guys. Okay, thank you, Lord, for your words. <clears throat> okay, as I said, this started actually yesterday morning at 1147. I was praying. And the Lord had shown me, um, he started talking to me about our skin, how our skin, is, which is the largest organ of our bodies, it just, everything's tucked inside of our skin, okay? So it's one of our houses. Um, our bodies are one of our houses, one of our dwelling places. The house we live in or the tent or whatever it is we live in, that's another one. And... Um, you know, we tabernacle with the Lord. There, there are just, he started talking to me about all these things. And he was reminding me that our skin helps protect, keep, helps protect us from things on the outside of us getting on the inside of us. It's the largest organ of the body, as I said. And when it gets compromised, like we get a cut, we know this, guys, it's very basic stuff, but it kind of, it's, it's like laying groundwork for some things the Lord's going to say in the message. Uh, when it's cut, when something's broken, somehow our, our flesh is compromised, then infection, bacteria, all kinds of yucky stuff can get in there and create problems. Okay. And then he talked about the house, how our house that we live in, the exterior of our house is, does the same thing. It's like a protection for everything that's on the inside. And it protects us against the elements like rain, snow, hail, dust, intruders. If the windows are left open and the door is left unlocked, the house is left unguarded and the protection is removed and the house is no longer safe. Just like when the skin is compromised, what's inside is no longer safe, okay? And then he went into the message. <clears throat> Here.
Here we go. I have said to prepare your homes, your physical house, and your spiritual house. I have said it is time to get into the place where I have called you. For some, those instructions include physically relocating. And for all, those instructions include seeing to it that your spiritual house is in order. You are not to let fear rule you. It will do harm to your mental house. And for some, it will drive you to make hasty decisions or to stop you from moving forward in your preparations. Fear is an enemy that will make every effort to gain entrance and undermine, to destroy and to create confusion and doubt. You must stand watch over the words I speak to you and the words in my scriptures. You must be the sentry over your home and your families. You must cover those you love with prayer. You must refuse compromise in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this I speak regarding that which you know to do. Set your house in order. Move yourself into position that you may always hear my instruction and always respond without delay unless I tell you to wait. You must always seek my face and you must remember always that I know the needs you will have and I will meet those needs in my time and way. You must remember that provision is in my hand and wisdom, strength, confidence, and peace are in my face. Look to my face in worship and adoration. Believe me who, for who I am and you will see my hand move as all your needs are met. I am faithful to forever be God. Never forget that. Even as you have read in my word, you now see the tearing down and destruction of governments and nations of, and of kingdoms. You hear the sounds of war and the natural increasing in volume. Know this, these things are a visible sign of that which is occurring in the spirit. Okay, and then he gave me these three words, the house, the body, and the soul. And the house signifies the temple, a sanctuary, the home, a shelter, a covering. The body signifies the temple in which we live, the body of Christ, earthly dwelling, and a vessel of action. And then the soul the temple, the mind renewed, the will, submission, the emotions, submission. Okay, and then he went back into the message. He said, the shofars have sounded, the human trumpets have declared, the battle lines were drawn from the beginning of time, on which side will you now stand? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare your hearts for greater battles. Prepare your emotions by practicing daily to subdue the lusts of the flesh. Prepare your will by surrendering, surrendering your agendas and choosing to seek until you find the will of the Father. Guard your hearts by guarding what you, have, what you will allow into it. I'm going to read that again. Guard your hearts by guarding what you will allow into it. Do not yield to the invitations to entertain yourselves with the darkness of the evil one. Keep your atmosphere clean by allowing only that which is clean into your home and into your earthly temple, even as you must also choose to keep the spiritual atmosphere around you clean by not polluting it with vile words spoken. And you guys, I'm step out for a minute. When when he's saying vile words, he's not just talk. He's not talking about cussing or swearing, you know, foul language. He's talking about even just what you're saying needs to not be. It needs to be wholesome and healthy and clean because we can speak the truth, but we need to be careful 
how we're speaking. We, we need to be careful that we're not complaining. Well, there's a lot of stuff. And the Lord will show us all in, in the moment if we just ask him, Lord, help me guard my, guard my lips. Okay, back in the message. Do not allow any corrupt communication to come from your lips. Do not pollute yourself, your home, or others with seditious language against your king. And that's just like language that just, you know, you're trying to stir up trouble. Do not pollute the spiritual atmosphere with unwholesome or crude talk. The boldness of the enemy is increasing so must your responses increase. Be strong against the attacks, the temptations as they come your way daily. <clears throat> Do not cower in fear. I am with you and have all the strength you need. You must view temptation as an intruder seeking entrance to your home. You must view sin as a poison seeking to kill you, for that is what it is and what it does. Whether it is against your mind or your emotions, your physical temple, your body, or your dwelling, you cannot afford to leave any window open, any door unlocked, or allow any intruder into your house. If you are watching, you already know. If you are watching, you already know things have changed on the earth dramatically in the past few months. The enemy has invaded, con invaded countries and is only hidden from those who refuse to see. Blindness has come upon the land as thick darkness has covered the minds of the people. Even among those who profess my name, there are those who cannot see the lightness of the hour. Wake up, I say, wake up my sleepy ones. The hour of frivolous lifestyles and superficiality has come to an end. Turn and repent or be lost with those who refuse me. Okay, he's telling me to read that part again, you guys. Even among those who profess my name, there are those who cannot see the lightness of the hour. Wake up, I say, wake up, my sleepy ones. The hour of frivolous lifestyles and superficiality has come to an end. Turn and repent or be lost with those who refuse me. And, and I'm going to step out for a minute, guys, because he's he wants me to clarify superficiality. Well, frivolous lifestyles and superficiality. Things that have no eternal value, just kind of living on the surface of a walk with him, living a lifestyle where you're, you know, you're kind of hanging on to him, but you're sort of really out there still doing, you know, still basically living the way you want to, instead of drawing closer to him and learning more about him and submitting to him. Okay. I'm going back in. Draw near, draw near to me. I say, draw near to the only salvation for your soul. Draw near. Make the changes you need to make in order to be mine. Make straight paths in your life. Clean up the debris and remove it from your life. Remove the stones of rebellion that cause you to stumble along the path. What you carry in your heart, your mind, and what you do with your time is either going to prepare the way for me in your life or give me no room to journey with you. When I say to you, make straight the way, I am speaking of your ways. Do not miss this. I will walk upon the highway of holiness, not upon the crooked paths of sin, of rebellion, of wickedness. If you would walk with me, prepare. Make straight your paths. Make clear your thoughts, your will, and your life. I'm sorry. Make clean your thoughts, your will, and your life. There we go. There are those among you who endeavor to walk the narrow way with me daily. I see your efforts and desire that you believe me when I say I am well pleased that you continue to follow. And even when you fail, you do not quit. Rather, you persevere. I see your victories and see your faithful love for your king. 
Okay, I got to back up because he's saying, read that again. Because there are some of us who just, we just look at our failures and we don't look at how we just keep persevering. We keep trying. We keep trying to, you know, get things the way we know they need to be. And and yet at the same time, when we fall, we we beat ourselves up. There are those among you who endeavor to walk the narrow way with me daily. I see your efforts and desire that you believe me when I say I am well pleased that you continue to follow. And even when you fail, you do not quit. Rather, you persevere. I see your victories and see your faithful love for your king. There are those among you who continue to look down through your history, focused on your failures rather than looking up and seeing that I walk with you and have left your past behind. I am not holding against you the sins of your past. I am not concerned with things for which you have been forgiven. Those things do not trouble me. Do not let them be time stealers any longer. The path is forward in front of you, not behind. We are not walking backward. We are walking forward. Okay, he's saying to read that again to the people that need to hear this part. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. There are those among you who continue to look down through your history, focused on your failures, rather than looking up and seeing that I walk with you and have left your past behind. I am not holding against you the sins of your past. I am not concerned with things for which you have been forgiven. Those things do not trouble me. Do not let them be time stealers any longer. The path is forward in front of you, not behind. We are walking. We are not walking backwards. We are going forward. Many are the ways I speak to my people. Many are the opportunities to listen and believe me. As I so often do, I ask you again, when have I lied to you? When have I not been faithful to my word? When has my strength not been strong enough? When has my wisdom been insufficient? Guard your hearts. Guard your minds, your will, your emotions. Guard your dwelling places. Do these things in the very best ways you can. Do them daily through the life you are daily invited to live in and with me. Your lands are moments from great upheavals. Your lands are moments from great upheavals. What you will experience will be greater trouble than you have seen and greater confusion in the minds and hearts of many peoples. Take to heart and put into practice the wisdom of my counsel found in scripture and through my words as I speak today, whether to directly to you or through my vessels, my trumpets, my watchmen on the walls today. Learn wisdom. Listen and follow. Clear your path for your king. Pull up the weeds of disobedience and remove the rocks of offense. Remember, I see and know everything. Remember, I am here to help you. Remember, only believe what I say and remember, walk in it. And he signed it, Holy, the Waymaker, the soon coming King. Thank you, Father. Guys, I know that probably a number of us on here and maybe some people who will watch at another time after the stream are seeing what's going on. And I know there's so many things that are being said about what's going to happen. And, um, you know, because this thing's happened, just like I'm going to say, just like with the eclipse and going back in history, and there are people that have posted videos talking about when uh, the U.S. has had these kinds of, uh, I guess they were totality, the eclipses were total eclipses, 
that uh, the number of it, like each instance, there was some kind of a, a major event that happened right, right around that time or right after that time. And we know that the Lord said that he put the sun and the moon, the stars, they're in the heavens to be for signs and seasons. And I absolutely believe that. And I don't think he's talking about the seasons of the year. Um, but the thing is that when we get, when we see all these things happen, oh, I start to say in the U.S., looking back at some of the videos people put out there about when major eclipses of this type have happened, that there have been, uh, there have been wars like the civil war and all the different wars or not all of them, but different wars that have started either during that time or immediately after or something like that. And major, well, I guess the New Madrid, I think that was that there was one during that one. I don't, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I'm just saying <clears throat> we see things happen. And today we know a lot of us know that CERN fired up their Hadron Collider again, and that supposedly NASA shot three things into the towards the moon, missiles or rockets or whatever. And there've just been different things that I've watched and heard and all of that. And the thing that I think Father wants us to get is, first of all, yes, he does give us warnings. Absolutely, he gives us warnings. But sometimes we think the warnings are just for, you know, they're just for the earth. And we don't realize that the Lord's talking to us saying, I mean it when I say, get your houses in order. I mean it when I say, repent. I mean it when I say, if you want to walk in peace, you're going to have to walk with me or you're not going to have peace. And it's because of his love. And I don't believe that he shows us these things or tells us these things, even when he gives me these words. Hang on just a sec. I don't believe he gives us these things or shows us these things to terrify us. I believe he speaks to us because he wants us to understand that things are moving in a direction and that we need to make sure that we are doing whatever it is he's called us to do. How, you know, if we're living like he was talking about the, uh, the frivolity and the uh, superficiality and all of that, if we're not living with a sober minded heart and attitude towards the Lord, if we're just down here, just like I was saying in the prayer in the beginning, uh, every moment is a blessing. Every second is a gift. It's all a gift. And we, I am so guilty of it myself. I'm not finger pointing. I'm saying, if we're not careful, we just take those moments for granted. We don't cherish the fact that Father is giving us time. He's giving us time to mature. He's giving us time to grow and and in our love for him and in our understanding of who he is and his ways. He's giving us time to discover that we don't decide what God's ways are. God's already decided what his ways are, and we're supposed to get on his program because he's not going to get on our program. So, you know, I, I know one of the things that he says a lot through this ministry is repent, repent, repent. And, uh, you know, clean up your lives, get, get yourselves in order. He's not doing it because he's trying to deprive us. He's not doing it because for any yucky reason, he's doing it because he loves us. Um, I know that there are, that we all have different things he's working on us about. And, um, and he gave me something the other day to share with y'all, with, um, yeah, with everybody. And that is when it comes to, I'm going to touch this thing again. <laughs> I'm going to touch addiction because it's an easy one to touch because it's something that so many people struggle with. And, you know, the Lord told me one time when I was asking about someone, whether or not they had a particular addiction, the Lord said, addiction is addiction. Addiction doesn't care how it gets you it, because the goal is, it's not about just getting you addicted to a substance or an object or a, any, it's about 
stealing your life from you and bringing you down into destruction. And um, so anyway, the other day the Lord gave me this. And for some, if you're struggling with addiction, I just encourage you to consider putting this into practice to try this out. Cause some people just don't feel like they can just come out of the addiction. Um, and you know, like I said, addiction is addiction. It's not, it doesn't matter what it is. It's there's some people will do different values of addiction, but the fact of the matter is addiction is a spiritual, it's an entity. It's a spiritual problem. It's not a, I mean, it's a spiritual, literal spiritual, it's a being. Okay. It is a, it is a demonic being. It's a very real thing. And people don't, there are people that don't believe that Christians can have demons influencing or on them or whatever. I'm not concerned and I don't believe God is so concerned in this discussion. Let's just say this. He's not so concerned about whether it's on you or in you, whether it's on you and pummeling you every single day, or it's in you and needs to be cast out. Whether it needs to be cast off of you or cast out of you. It just needs to be dealt with and gotten rid of. And so, um, so whatever it is you're struggling with, this is what the Lord said. Tell them three, two, one. Do three, two, one. For one week, whatever your addiction is, only allow yourself to practice that three times a day. This is for the people that just won't, don't feel like they can just quit because they haven't gotten to the place where they really believe that God is strong enough to help them stop, to help them get rid of that. He's going to teach. Those of you who are in that place, he's going to teach you that he is strong enough. But at this point in time, I know there are people that are beating themselves up every single day because that's what the enemy does. Oh, he entices us. We get stuck. We get trapped with an addiction of some kind. It doesn't matter if it's uh, to pornography. If it's, It doesn't even matter what it is. We get trapped in the addiction and then we're in condemnation because the very one who offered it to us then turns around and tells us how awful we are. And so it's a vicious, vicious cycle. And those of you who are struggling with addiction already know this. And I know this because I did too. Um, so so for, for until you are able to get, if you're struggling and you just don't feel like you can just quit, do the three, two, one thing. For the first week, allow yourself only for three times a day to practice that addiction. I'm not saying it's good to practice it. I'm just saying some of you have looked for ways out and you haven't been able to find it. Okay, so start with this. Three times a day, no more than that. The second week, two times a day, no more than that. The third week, one time a day, no more than that. And all through this time that you are doing the three, two, one thing, all through this time, stay in prayer. Ask Father to help you, that help you get through this. And you guys, oh, he keeps asking us, when have I lied to you? When have I lied to you? And it's because he's trying to get us to understand we believe that he has lied. We believe he's lied. If we didn't believe he, he's lied, we would take him at his word when he says, I'll give you the strength you need to be able to overcome anything. I'll give you whatever it is you need help with. I'll give you that help. Just believe me. And he even said that at the beginning, at the end of this message, didn't he? Only believe, only believe. So until we stop believing that he lies, then let's try doing it this way. For those of you who are trying to come out of addiction and, and put him to the test and all the way through these three weeks, all the way through, make sure you're spending time in prayer because you know, the thing I know about addiction and not just stopping, the thing I know is the enemy, the enemy will say to us, well, I'll quit, but not just right now. I mean, you can quit, but well, not, I, it's not, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to work my way down. I'm going to work my way out of this, work my way off of this or whatever I'm going to. And 
the thing is he may let you do it for a little while, but then he's going to come back even harder and press you. And before you know it, you're as bad or worse than you were in the addiction before you decided to try to come out. So during that time, don't just do three, two, one, but also spend lots of time in prayer with him. And remember the scripture where he talks about cleaning the house sweeping it clean. And those things that have been cast out or thrown out, wander around out there in the wilderness and they come back to see if the house has been filled and they come back and find it empty. We cannot afford to leave vacancy when we eliminate something from our lives that we need to get rid of. We need to fill that space up with Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit stuff. So that's that was the thing he said. To share that with you, try that, do the three, two, one. And when you get down to that seventh day of that once a day thing, you've had three weeks <clears throat> to ask Father to help you. You've had three weeks to make up your mind whether or not you're going to believe he's a liar and he's helping you. You're going to have those three weeks to get strengthened for that moment that you have set when you've said, Father, I have sinned, I will sin no more after this day. The enemy will, you guys, he will keep you in addiction if you don't set a time and have a plan. And for some of you, like, okay, I'll use me because I'm the example I have. For, for me, it was literally, I had to just quit. I knew I couldn't do the walking it back thing. I knew I couldn't just, you know, I had to, I, when I was smoking and drinking and using drugs, all of that stuff, it wasn't a thing where I could just go, I'm just going to back off and, and then I'll be okay. I had to quit cold turkey. That was me. But not everybody can do that. Some people are able to do the step and down, but start taking the steps and step down and stop condemning yourselves because you failed in the past and stop listening to the enemy who's going to tell you, you can't do this. You're not going to be able to make it. You're not going to be strong enough. Don't give him more credit for being stronger than uh, you're giving God credit for being. Don't, don't do that. You guys, if we, these temples, these houses, the, this dwelling place Father's given us, he's telling us in this message, look, scripture says, prepare the, prepare the way of the Lord. Well, what are we going to do out? Are we going to go, I mean, what are we going to do? Are you just going to go out there and start uh, building some kind of a thing out there? He's not talking about doing something out there. He's talking about right here. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Walk in the way of the Lord. Live in the way of the Lord. Prepare your temple to be the way the Lord. He wants to come. We don't want to invite him into a dirty house. We don't want to invite him into an unclean place. And he said he's not going to, he's going to walk on a highway of holiness. And what have we been called to be? We've been called to be holy. He said, you be holy like I'm holy. We've been called to be set apart from the world. These things that are unclean, whether it's the talk or, and for some people that can be an addiction. Gossip can be an addiction, all kinds of things. So all of the things that, you know, are part of the world and the ways of the evil one that we have walked in and have not cleaned up our house, our temple, we would not let, okay, he showed me this today. It was like, when he was talking to me about this, like, say you have a huge piece of furniture. Thank you for reminding me of this, Father. You have a huge piece of furniture in your house, and that piece of furniture is uh, somehow, it's filthy, it's stinky, it's nasty. You didn't really want it in your house. You don't really want it in your house, but it's too heavy for you to get out of your house by yourself. Thank you, Lord. So, the Lord is the uh, moving man. He's the muscle that will come and help you carry that piece of stinky, vile, filthy furniture out of your house. We can't leave any window open in our lives, you guys. We can't leave any space, any room for the enemy to come in. I know he tells us this, these things because he loves us and and. 
I know sometimes they seem really hard to, you know, especially if we've tried and tried and tried and we can't seem to get hold of the words that we allow coming out of our mouths. And he just reminds me, takes me right back to the scripture where he says, out of the issues of the heart, the mouth speaks. So clean up what's going on in here. Stop letting garbage come into your ears. These are gates into your soul. These are gates into your soul. Stop letting things come in through those gates that are unclean. You know, I was thinking today about some of the things when I was out in the world that um, I watched. And those things are, I can't get them out. I've never, you know, I, it isn't that I sit around thinking think about them all the time, but I was just thinking today, Lord, I let that stuff come in and I can't, unless God removes it. And I've asked him many times, take these yucky things out that I've done. I've watched, I've listened to, I've said, take them out. Unless the Lord removes them, they're in there. And so there's no need. I don't go back and, and ask him to forgive me for them all the time, all the time, all the time, because I've already asked him and I know I'm forgiven. And I've changed my ways in those things. I'm no longer practicing those things, watching or listening to or doing those things. And so I know I'm forgiven. But you guys, our, our temples are precious to him. And I'm not saying, oh, God's all about our bodies. I'm saying, what's in here? And what's in here, how we're living, what we're saying, what we're doing, what we're believing, what we're listening to, what we're watching, things we're holding on to we shouldn't be holding on to. Those are the stones and the weeds and the junk on the road. And the Lord's saying, make straight the way of the Lord. Make the path clear. He's already cleaned it off once, but then we go, you know, we go walking down the road and the enemy's standing off the side of the road and he throws a big boulder at us and we just let it go ahead and fall on the, and we don't even try to get rid of it. We just keep those things there and God's going, no, clean, clean it up, clean it up. We don't have any idea. I know I don't have any idea how much father loves me. None of us really knows how, nobody knows how much he loves anybody. We just, that the thing we have is, seeing our Savior hanging on the cross. We can connect with that just a little bit, but not to the fullness of, of what it actually is and what it actually cost. I don't think we really see it all the way. And so we have a tendency, if we're not careful, just to take it for granted and go, well, yeah, it's paid for. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm good. But where is the thing inside of us that loves uh, our Lord more than we love ourselves. Where is that? Isn't it awesome that he continues to work with us and to call us and to love us in all the ways he does to be patient with us? Where is our love for him? And I'm going to say this again because I know Johanna's on here. It's not about feeling. I don't love Chuck the way I, if I really want to ch love Chuck well, I need to love him the way he wants to be loved. Because I can do all kinds of things for him that mean absolutely nothing to him and neglect the very things that he would cherish seeing me do. You know, it's just like when someone gives you a gift and it's not really a gift that you really, I mean, it's nice. It's nice that they gave you a gift, but it's not, not really like if somebody gives you golf clubs and you have no desire, no interest in golfing. <laughs> well, that was a very thoughtful thing for them to do, but that gift doesn't, that's not really something that you would really want, you would want a gift that means something to you. Well, we don't decide, as I said, we don't decide how Father wants to be loved. He's already decided that. And the question is, are we willing to love him the way he wants to be loved? Or are we just trying to do other things instead and, and just kind of skimming over the top of it and going, well, that ought to be good enough. 
because he's made it very plain how he wants to be loved. He wants to be loved by our obedience. When he gives us something to do, he wants us to do it. When he says, I don't, I don't want you to live this kind of a life. I want you to live a holy life. That's how he's saying to us, this is the gift I want you to give me. I want you to live this way. But when we say, I don't want to live that way, that's nice, God. But, you know, isn't this a good enough gift over here? I mean, I'm doing all of these other things for you. Isn't Aren't these other things good enough? I'm putting money in the plate at church or I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm just singing some really pretty hymns or aren't these things good enough? And the Lord's going, well, those are nice. Yeah, I want you to. I want you to bless the work I'm doing the earth, but I want you to love me by the way you're with the way you're choosing to live your life. So you guys, whatever it is you're struggling with, do the three, two, one thing. If it's that you are just a shopaholic and you're constantly sitting on the internet and buying stuff from Amazon or something, Limit yourself to how many times? Three, two, one. And if that's giving you more time or giving you permission to do it more often than you do, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but seriously, Father's not, I, I don't think he's being mean. I think he's calling us to holiness. And just like he said in the message, the ones that are really trying to walk with him every day, that are trying to lay down the ways of the world and to walk away from that and to find out what he wants and trying to implement the lifestyle, trying to really live the way he wants them to live. He is pleased with that. And sometimes we just, we don't feel like doing something he wants us to do, just like our bodies are in rebellion. Our bodies want to do whatever they want to do. But the Lord's looking at us and saying, who do you love more? What do you love more? Who's the God in your life? Are you more willing to bow down to that thing that has basically has you by the throat? Or are you more willing to bow down to the one who created you and loved you and gives you the choice? Because that thing that has control in your life does not want to give you a choice. So I want to pray with you guys. My heart is heavy because we can't see. We can't see. Mm. Father God, you are so good all of the time. There's nothing about you that's not good. There's nothing about you that's not absolutely perfect. And there's nothing about you that isn't holy. And we know, we know that we know that we know you've said in your word and we're not trying to earn our salvation. You said there's. it doesn't matter what our works are. We cannot earn our way into your kingdom. And Lord God, I understand. I hope that we all understand. If we don't, help us understand, Father, that when you're giving us things, when you're trying to teach us, when you're trying to grow us up, and you're trying to help us understand that you won't have rebellion in your kingdom that you are a sovereign God. This is not a democracy. You are the Lord God Almighty. And we don't get to decide what you say is right or wrong. We don't get to decide what you say you want. The hard thing about it, Lord, is that 
everything. You said everything is a love issue. Absolutely everything is a love issue. Every choice we're making, even if it seems insignificant, is a love issue. From the food we put into the body to the things that we say, the things we do, the thoughts we're willing to think about, who we're willing to listen to, what we're willing to watch, everything is a love issue. And it always boils down to who do we love more, you or ourselves? Who do we love more, God? And you're trying to help us see. Lord, I'm asking you, even, even, even though we are, we're all in different places in our walks with you and I'm, nobody's better than anybody else. We're just in different places in our walks from being little brand new babies in you that are all excited and don't know much except they know that you are the creator and Yeshua is the way, which is the most important thing for them to know. All the way to the ones who have walked with you for many, many years and all of those in between at different stages in their walks, some of them just skimming along on the surface and not willing to dive deep into the relationship with you, deep into knowing you more intimately. We're all in different places, God. What a job you have being a parent of so many, so many kids. <laughs> Your love is unfathomable. So I'm asking you, Father, because there are so many who don't know how to receive your love, don't understand, don't know how to, they just don't know how to allow themselves because of the things they've been through. They don't know how to allow themselves to let your love for them come in. So Father, because I know so many times it's because we look at what we've done or where we've been and we feel so completely undeserving and unworthy and like you couldn't possibly love us, but God, you love us so much. So I'm asking you, Lord, I'm asking you to help, help each one of us be brave enough to dare to believe your love for us. And I'm asking you to help us however we need that help. And I believe that you're going to say yes, because I believe this is what you want. And according to your word, when we ask for something you you want for us, your answer is yes, and we get what we've asked for. So I'm asking you, Father, to help us know your love in ways we've never known it before and to be able to, to Help us be able to let you in where we haven't been able to let you in because of the things we've been through. Lord, the enemy has stood in front of uh, all of your people, of uh, people all over the world for so long. And God, I know you're calling us to come out from behind the doors where we've hidden ourselves away, doors where we're afraid, locked in these cells where we're afraid that if we come out, 
we're either going to be disappointed and you're not going to be who we think you are. You're not going to be everything you say you are, or we're afraid that if we come out, the enemy is going to get us. God, you want a strong and courageous people. So no matter how long we've been walking with you, whether it's just for a moment or a lifetime, whatever it is, Father, I'm asking you to help us be able to receive, be willing to receive, however you do that, God. And it's probably going to be different for each one. Help your people take that step over. And I know it's a step of faith, but I, I also believe there's something standing in front of a lot of people that's stopping them from being able to take that step of faith because of what they've been told or somehow have believed because of what the enemy has done in their lives. And Father, I thank you and praise you for everything you're doing because I know that you are good. And I know that it's grievous to your heart that your people don't believe you. So, Father, just even as the man in Scripture said when you asked him, do you believe? And he said, help my unbelief. Help us, Lord. And thank you. I believe your answer is yes. So for every person that you're doing that for, for everyone who's praying and agreeing in this prayer, Lord, I'm asking you, remind them, Holy Spirit, as often as they need reminding that you're not a man, you don't lie, you are not a man, you don't lie, you tell the truth. When I, when we ask for something you want for us, you give us what we ask for, because it is not your will for us to fail. It is not your will for us not to be with you in your kingdom. It is your will that we will be successful in this walk with you, whatever that looks like, having fully given ourselves over to you and your will, and laying down our lives completely. <laughs> That's your will. So, Father, that's what we're asking for. And I pray over everyone, Lord, the encouragement that, that is needed because some people are really discouraged and having a hard time. And I know we need to, you know, we need to enter into praise and we need to enter into worship and we need to enter into scripture and into prayer and into obedience. And that discouragement will leave, but we've got to stop sitting around and just believing that you don't care. We can't make it. We're, we've failed too many times. Thank you, God, because I know that you're good. And thank you, God, because I know that you're working in all of your people and that every step of progress is a victory and that every, uh, every decision to lay down our lives and take up your cross every single day is a victory. Thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in the body of Christ. We pray for the whole body of Christ, and we pray for every single person out there that's lost, that you want every single one. And since you said you're not willing for anybody to be lost, we're going to pray for them all. We pray for the ones that our families, our, our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors. We pray for the people that are out there steeped in things like witchcraft and all of the garbage that they're steeped in. We pray for them all, Father, and we, we stand in agreement with you. You don't want them to be lost. You pulled us out of stuff. You can pull them out of stuff. And so, Father, we pray. And for all of the ones who are struggling in any way with any sin, with any addiction in the body of Christ that's keeping them in condemnation, I'm asking, and Lord, I know that I know that your answer is yes. I'm asking you to give them strength to 
come out of the addiction, to come out of the sin, they have the strength that they need to be able to come out of sin because that is your will. And so when we ask you for help in those areas, you say yes. So Father, every time we start to put our hand to something we shouldn't put it to, remind us, God, until we learn this lesson, until we grow up and really believe that you are who you say you are, you are, and your word is true. And you are not lying when you tell us you will help us. You are not lying when you tell us you'll give us the strength we need to quit doing anything or to start doing anything. You're on this journey with us and you are not a liar. So forgive us for believing that you are, first of all, Lord. And thank you for giving us what we need to be able to do what you've called us to do. Thank you, Father God. You are good at all times, in all ways. No matter what your answer is in any circumstance we find ourselves in, you are always good. And you are always faithful. And we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Almighty God, you are beautiful beyond description. You are holy and perfect and pure. You are gentle and loving and kind and fierce. You are fiercely passionate for your people. You're not willing to see us just fall away and die off. You continue to labor with us. Help us stop trying your patience, God. Help us see where we are still in rebellion, where we're still just trying to do our own thing. Help us see that, Father, and help us have mercy for those who are struggling as well. Instead of condemning, instead of reviling, instead of holding unforgiveness, Father God, forgive us for that, and please help us see what we have not been willing to see because we have not been willing to look. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Father. Bless us to grow more and more and more every day in our understanding of who you are and what you want from your people. And that when you say to believe on your son, when, when, uh, asked in scripture, what is it that father wants to, you want us to believe on your son? That means when our savior says, live this way, lay your life down, do what you saw me do. That's what it means to believe on your son. Help people that don't know that, learn that God. It's not about works. It's about believing on your son. And your son did not stay, say, say, stay in sin. He did not say, keep living the way you're living, however you want to. He said, you do what you've seen me do. You lay down your life. You take up your cross. You forgive the ones that hurt you when you didn't do anything. You, you let go of the offenses. You let go of all of the stuff. And you seek the glory of your father, that he would be glorified in your life. Not that you take his glory, but that you seek that he be glorified in your life by the way you choose to live your life. Father, I pray that for all of us. Thank you, Lord. I know this is a long prayer. I'm not apologizing for it at all. I'm not apologizing for anything because you are good and because you deserve our time and you deserve our attention. So thank you, Father, for being who you are in every way that you are who you are. Thank you, Father. Bless the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Most High God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in them. You are the Almighty. All glory and honor and praise to you, Father. All glory and honor and praise to you. You're the only one that deserves it. The only one. Thank you for being the Lord God Almighty, the one who has no equal anywhere, anywhere, no equal. Thank you, Father. In the name of our Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Thank you, Father. Are you all ready for um, are you all ready for sacrament? Mm. 
I'm going to give you just a minute while everybody goes and gets their, gets their emblems. And somebody asked once, what are the emblems? It's the, the bread and the wine or the cracker and the juice or whatever. It represents a broken body and the spilled blood of Yeshua. So if you didn't know when I use that word, that's what I'm talking about. I wish y'all would move here. I do. I wish y'all had moved here. Sorry. That's just what I wish. And some people are going, what? Why would we move there? Just so we can hug each other and sit and talk and hear each other and pray together and, and talk about how good the Lord is and do kingdom work together here. That's, that's why I said that. Mercy and forgiveness and compassion, yes. I'll share a really, really short testimony with you. As a friend of mine, she's gone home to be with the Lord now, but years ago she told me about a request she had of the Lord. She asked him for the gift of Let's see, what was it? Discernment, just abs. I think it was discernment, absolute discernment. She wanted to be able to really know, um, you know, to be able to know what was going on in a person's life and everything. And the Lord granted her that for like, I think, I don't even know if it was a full day. I think it might have been one day. And she went back to him and he taught her. You can have all kinds, you can have absolute discernment, but if you don't have compassion, mercy, what was it? I think it was one of those two. Then you just move into judgment and criticism. Scary. Okay, guys, are you ready? Father, thank you so much once again. We thank you so much for who you are. This way you've made for us is, it's beautiful. Just to be able to take the bread and wine or the crackers and the juice or whatever it is people are having in remembrance of you. This is like, this is such an easy beautiful, gentle thing. And yet when we think about what it represents, about what our Savior went through for us, and some of us don't even get that he really did do it for us. I mean, we may get that he did it for people, but maybe we don't get that he did it for me specifically. And how we can just come and do this in remembrance of you when you did all of those things, taking the beatings, living the sinless, perfect life in the face of all of the adversity. And I really have no doubt that there was a lot of it because the enemy wasn't going to just leave you alone. The rejection and all of the things that you went through, Yeshua, all of those um, opportunities when people said or did things that you could have, you could have responded in um, in ways that you didn't, even to the very end of your life when you were you were beaten and like a lamb led to the slaughter, you didn't even open your mouth. And so many times we can't even get through a day without somebody saying something that offends us and we snap back with some smart answer, smart aleck answer, I should say. You go through all that, you do all of that, and then you say, here, do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Father. You did not just die. You rose again. <clears throat> Help us not leave you in the tomb. Help us not leave you in the grave, Father. Help us remember, Lord, you are seated at the right hand of the Lord God Almighty.
and you're interceding for every one of us that Father has given you. You're interceding for the ones that he gave you that haven't even said yes yet because they're yours. Please forgive our arrogance in not bowing to you the way we should. And Lord, if there's anybody here who's holding anything against anyone, we pray for them. We ask you to bless them. We want to give them an opportunity just to repent now, to let go of offense, and to ask you to wash them clean. And Father, if there's anything in any of us, I'm praying this for me, if there's anything in me that's that's offensive to you that I need to repent for at all right now, please let me know. Help us all know, Lord, so we can ask you to forgive us and we can let go of whatever we need to let go of. And then if there are people that need to go to others after this after this time and of uh, the live stream or at some point in the near future to go to people and ask for forgiveness, Father, I I pray for them and we all pray for each other to be courageous and to do that so that we're not stumbling blocks in the lives of other people either. You didn't put a stumbling block in front of us. You called us. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name this day. And I know I'm crying and stuff like that, but God, you know I'm not sad I am so grateful that you are who you say you are and that with each day that goes by, if we just will listen and look, you prove to us that you are who you say you are. We bless your name and we take the bread that was represents your body that was broken for us and the wine that represents your blood or the grape juice that represents your blood that was poured out for us. And we thank you so much for what you've done, God, and for what you're doing even now in Yeshua's name. Amen. You guys, go ahead and do the three, two, one if you need to. Do it if you need to. The Lord will help you through it. And remember to be praying if you're struggling. It, whatever it is, it doesn't even have to be addiction. Whatever it is, whatever the sin is, if you're struggling, just, just do it. Mm. And just go ahead and love that person that you're mad at that you don't love. Just go ahead and love them, guys, and you'll be like your father in heaven. He is the resurrection and the life. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, Marcy. I just saw you're on here. And I know I've said it, but I have to say it again. Gina Panzani. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I love Gina and I love her name. I love to say her name. <laughs> 
We would love to have you move here, Judy. I really, I would love to have you all move here. I'm just not even kidding at all. Okay, let me see if there is something. Did you guys put your prayer requests in here? Because I'm going to I'm going to pray one more time and this time it's going to be over all the requests that are here and whatever else Father puts in my heart to pray, but Janet Hickey, I'm proud of you, girl. You're going cold turkey on your diet soda. Cool. Oh, Marianne, you pulled your hamstrings. Ah. Help. Okay, guys, we're going to pray, and then I'm going to let you go because I, I appreciate so much. Chuck and I both appreciate so much that y'all come and that you stay and, and, um, Golly, the leadership team, we just, we love you guys, and we are so blessed that you spend time with us. I just want to remind you again, um, Judy's going to start her her food for thought meeting. First one will be Wednesday, and let me see, Judy, rem remind me if I'm saying it wrong. I think we decided, let's see, it would be 6 o'clock East Coast, five o'clock, Midwest, Central. Okay, sorry. East Eastern Time, six, five Central, four Mountain, and three Pacific Time. If you guys want to join in that, um, then be looking for. I'll put a notification out, and I know I'll put it out on Wednesday, and it will have the link to the Zoom meeting, so you can join Judy and. Uh, Nicole, if she's there, and my sister is praying about when to get her started with the uh, faith portion of Temple Keepers. Okay, guys, are you ready? Are you ready? You ready? I'm ready. Love you guys. Yes, that's correct. Good. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Hi, front desk. Hi, Stacy. Didn't just saw you guys come on here. Okay. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for everyone who came. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've been doing in all of our lives. You're still working on all of us, all of us. And we thank you and praise you for that, Father. We thank you that you have called your people to be holy and you're teaching us how to do that, how to walk in holiness, how to walk in as what you have created us, to, created us to be, which are set apart ones. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for, for the things you've been doing in all of our lives and how you've been so patient with us and so faithful. And Father, we're lifting up everybody who has prayer requests here. I see front desk asking for prayers for her family to be saved, spotless and wrinkle free. Oh God, praying that for all of us, <laughs> all of us, all of us, Lord, that we would be spotless and wrinkle free. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We're praying for the ones who are sick, who have physical ailments of any kind, who have mental or emotional ailments of any kind. We're asking you, Father, uh, for wisdom for those who need to make changes in their lifestyle or in their diets or uh, their behaviors in such a way that uh, they're doing their part if there is something they can do that they would have understanding about what that is. And Lord God, we're not, you said to go into all the world, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers, preach the gospel. We freely received and we are to freely give. And so in, even in our words, Father, we freely give to all of those who have prayer requests. We speak life and health into everybody, into all of the relationships, into all of the uh, mental um issues into all of the physical or um, emotional issues. We speak life and health in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray over all of those who have loved ones that have not um, 
surrendered to you that you're calling but that are still struggling. Lord God, for the ones who have felt guilt and shame because they've either walked away or they just feel like they're too dirty to come to you, Father God, we pray for them to receive from your hand great courage in whatever way you choose to do that so that they uh, so they go ahead and take that step for all of the ones that are lost. We ask you for uh, some kind of revelation for them. And, and Lord, I know that even if we just reach out a little bit to you, you are right there and you answer. So I thank you and praise you for that. I pray for all the people who have loved ones that are lost in the world that are struggling. Lord, I ask you to bless them, to have peace, to know that they just need to continue to pray and do as you lead them to do and to trust you to do your part because you will. And I thank you for that, God. I thank you for this fellowship. I thank you for every brother and sister in Christ. I thank you for your great, great love for all of us. We're going we're gonna to just continue to thank and praise you, God, for being who you are. And we bless your name this day in the name of our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Look at this. Everybody's saying good night. All right, guys. We love you. We will see you. And we went on a while, didn't we, tonight? We love you very much. And we'll see you, hopefully, Friday Zoom. Wednesday. No, pardon me. We'll see you, hopefully, Wednesday's uh, Zoom with Judy for Food for Thought. Friday with Zoom with me. And then Saturday for Prayers with Vivian. And then back again Monday night. And we'll do it all over again, Lord willing. Love you guys. I'm going to say goodnight. I'm going to hang. Chuck, who's Irene? <laughs> okay, guys, two clicks, you know, and then we're out of here. <laughs> There's one. And here it comes two. Bye-bye.